sick, so I'm going to try and get through this the best I can. So please bear with my nasally fluctuating pubescent-esque voice. My name is Sama, and welcome to Mediocre Guidance. Before I go any further, I want to point out that I will be talking about weight today, which I realize is a very heavy topic. Wah, wah. Sorry, that was dumb. I really want to emphasize that I am not a medical professional and I will not be discussing disorderly eating at all, since I am not remotely qualified to do so. Please seek professional help if this material is triggering for you, or if you are currently experiencing any distress around eating or body image. Otherwise, if you would like to hear an internet stranger's two cents on the matter, well, here I am. I wanted to start off this episode by talking about something that affects us all, body image. We are surrounded by examples of what a perfect body should look like, even though that goalpost keeps shifting every few months. I personally have never had the Instagram-worthy body type that is considered hashtag body goals, but I've worked hard on my self-esteem and I've just accepted that my unique bone structure literally cannot give me the kind of physique that is so coveted right now. Side note, I'm not going to go down the rabbit hole of how edited and forcibly posed influencer photography is, because that is a whole other can of worms. But if you are interested in that topic, I highly recommend checking out Stephanie Lang's channel, which I will link down in the description below. She is one of my favorite YouTubers and does a phenomenal job of showing us how things are not as they seem when it comes to celebrity bodies. What I do want to talk about is a concept of my own, which I call happy weight. I have gone through several iterations of weight in my life, from being overweight to being at my skinniest. By the way, when I say overweight or underweight going forward, I mean those terms medically based on body mass index or BMI. When I was at my slimmest, I was actually going through depression at that time, and I felt really lost in life. When I was at my heaviest, I was eating at the whim of others, meaning that I would eat whenever my friends and family would, and I did not have the courage to say no when I was too full. The middle ground between these two personal extremes for me has been what I consider my happy weight. This is the weight I naturally sit at when I'm experiencing my lowest levels of stress, depression, and anxiety, and living my best life. Basically, this is the weight I am when I am thriving. I want you to imagine that you are living on an island that has no internet connection, unheard of I know, and is isolated from any media influence. This island has your ideal climate, and there is an abundance of nutritious foods available to you at all times, and it's free. The only people in your social circle are those who love and support you, and give you the freedom to do whatever you want. Money is no object, so you spend your time contributing to your community, or pursuing your hobbies, or even doing nothing. It's totally up to you. There is no standard of beauty here, everyone is just happy being themselves. What would your weight be? This is your happy weight. Of course, God knows that utopia does not yet exist in our world, so if that visualization ended in complete blankness for you, instead, think of a time when you just felt really good about yourself, and I mean emotionally. What was your weight then? When it comes to discussions on health and fitness, I wish we talked more about the toll negative emotions can have. Yeah, experts say watch your diet and get enough sleep, etc., etc., but what about our feelings? I am a poster child emotional eater. I eat when I'm both bored and stressed. My eating habits are also very easily influenced by those around me. When my roommate joins me for dinner, if he eats a lot, I eat a lot. When I'm with my parents, they insist I finish what's on my plate, regardless of what my own instincts are telling me. Can you see from these examples how your emotions and the social structures you're in can influence your weight? What if those factors were gone? If you were at peace with yourself and your surroundings and you had complete autonomy, how do you think your body would react? We usually think of weight as the end result, but I encourage you to think of weight as an indicator of how you're doing. So instead of thinking, ugh, I've put on weight again, I've been eating way too much, try pivoting that thought and instead asking, I've put on weight again, what is this a reflection of in my life? And I don't mean to exclude anyone who has trouble putting on weight and is considered underweight. Maybe you have the opposite problem. Either way, I encourage you to start communicating with your body. When you open up to the idea that your body is capable of showing you signs of what is both helping and harming you, you can actually start to listen and respond accordingly. When I was overweight, I went on this aggressive campaign to diet and exercise, and it didn't work. 
Instead, I ended up with post-workout inflammation, and my immunity took a nosedive, leaving me sick and exhausted. Don't let that discourage you from exercising. Fitness is important. But my body was trying to tell me at that point in my life that fitness and diet were not the issue. Something else was a problem, but I couldn't figure it out, so I gave up. Instead, I continued living my life, and over the next several years, I really started focusing on my emotional health, with no consideration on what effect it would have on my body. But because I did that, the weight started coming off on its own as I learned to regulate my emotions and eat independently of how I was feeling. My body had finally learned to relax, and so the weight came off naturally. On the flip side, when I was at my skinniest, I didn't really know how to enjoy my life. When I did enjoy my life, I would put on a little bit of weight. So that's what I do now. I sit at my happy weight and I don't care that I could technically be hotter or more sexy because instead I have chosen to be happy. My last point is that we always assume once we reach our ideal weight, we have to stay at that weight forever to be satisfied, which is silly. Nature changes with the seasons and yes, despite how we treat our environment, we are also a part of nature. Weight fluctuations are normal and should be accepted with open arms. When it's the holidays and we stuff ourselves full of turkey, or you visit Belgium and indulge in the ridiculously amazing chocolate they have there, who cares if you develop a muffin top? You are living your life. This is what you came to this earth to do, is to live your life to the fullest. And to all my lovely ladies, we have to deal with hormonal fluctuations every single month. And to my mamas out there, we women create entire human beings, okay? So what if you don't have a tiny waist? You are literally a source of life. Love your bodies, my friends, exactly as they are right now. They are the vessel for your spirit. When you love your body, you will become attuned to it as your vessel, and you will learn how to take care of it as a beautiful container of your soul. And on that note, yes, it is a vessel. You are not your body. Let's look at this spiritually, since that is literally what this channel is supposed to be about. (laughs) Before I dive into some ACIM text, I want to advise you that the language used is similar to that of the Holy Bible, including the names of our main players, such as Christ, Holy Spirit, God, etc. That being said, I'd like to clarify that this is not supposed to be a continuation of the Bible or anything, as that is a very sacred text to those of the Christian faith and stands on its own. ACIM is meant to be a belief system of its own as well. In fact, I consider A Course in Miracles to be the love child of Christianity and New Age philosophy, except that this love child rebelled really hard and went rogue against both its parents. Although the language does use masculine terminology, please stay open to the content as I've found that you can very easily swap out anything with feminine or non-binary terms and the message stays exactly the same. Okay, back to our bodies. In previous episodes, I mentioned that A Course in Miracles is a record of the channel words of Jesus Christ. So here he is to tell you a little something-something about your body and its purpose in your life. The body appears to be largely self-motivated and independent, yet it actually responds only to the intentions of the mind. If the mind wants to use it for attack in any form, it becomes prey to sickness, age, and decay. If the mind accepts the Holy Spirit's purpose for it instead, it becomes a useful way of communicating with others, invulnerable as long as it is needed, and to be gently laid by when its use is over. Of itself, it is neutral, as is everything in the world of perception. Whether it is used for the goals of the ego or the Holy Spirit depends entirely on what the mind wants. The irony of me reading that while sick is a testament that I am not nearly as enlightened as I should be, (laughs) or that I wish I could be. Anyway, this passage is important and will lay the foundation for quite a few of our next episodes. When you see the phrase, if the mind wants to use the body for attack in any form, the word attack isn't just about physical or violent attack, it means turning against one another in general, whether that's through ill feelings about someone or anything that deviates away from love. And don't forget, you can also attack yourself, maybe through the words of your own inner critic, or beating yourself up over your failures, or even something as simple as feeling insignificant or powerless. Anything that is misaligned with the truth of who you really are in spirit. And of course, you may think, well, why would I willfully attack someone? I'm a nice person. Or, why would I willfully become prey to sickness, age, and decay? That's not in my control. We all die someday, even the best of us. Remember that attack is the result of feeling separate from God and each other. 
we have built ourselves a reality that is so hell-bent on convincing us that there is no God or that this God dislikes us that it creates this hopelessness, a feeling that no one of real power has our backs and that no one loves us for who we really, truly are. So subconsciously, we feel such a strong separation from belonging that we have, as a collective, convinced ourselves that it's every man for himself. This belief leads to pain for ourselves, others, and our bodies in the world of perception. I'm guessing your next question is, so what on earth is the world of perception? That, my friends, is the subject of our next adventure together, where I'm going to be explaining some sci-fi ridiculousness. Until then, thanks for watching and have a wonderful day. Sorry, this recording has been so freaking breathy and full of hot air, if you will. <laughs> thanks for hanging in there. See you next time on Mediocre Guidance.